So in today's episode we're playing Real Madrid. Our European dream is officially over, but we've got some tactical changes to talk through. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to the NK Zagro Save. I am Coach Left Foot. Pleasure to have you with me. And uh, it's going it's going pretty well, to be honest. Still top of the league. We are out of Europe. We are playing Real Madrid, but um, the way results have gone, we've won one game, we've lost four, we've got three points. That was probably three more points than I thought we would have got in this group. The fact we beat Inter, and they've topped the group and only seem to have definitively qualified, I think it's been alright. You know, We could stop Real Madrid getting out of the group if we take something off them. So, you know, a lot to play for, a bit of pride, a bit of pride in here. But we were last together for the Arsenal game and we lost 2-1. We followed that up with a 1-0 win against Luko, which we showed as well. We then played Hey Duke at home and a 4-2 win, which was ridiculous, to be honest. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous. We beat them 4-2. Um, they went 1-0 up. We then equalised two minutes later. They went 2-1 up, got into half-time. Alberto scored, and then we just changed the game completely. We scored two goals in the last ten minutes of the game, three minutes apart. Alberto getting a second, and Mikel Arejo getting one from the edge of the box. And it was just brilliant. A really well-deserved goal. Cabrera picked up a knock. It wasn't anything too bad, though. He is back from injury. Uh, we then went away to Inter Milan at the Giuseppe Mazzea and lost 3-0. They scored very early on. We were chasing the game. We knew we had to get something out of it. It, these things happen. Uh, we followed that up with a bit of jet lag. 0-0 away at Slaven Blupo. Um, disappointing result. We changed the team around a little bit. Uh, I was disappointed with who came in in that game. It wasn't the best of games to have. But we followed it up with a 2-0 win against Rodez in the quarterfinal of the Croatian Cup. Something we're still trying to uh, re retain and win for the third time in a row. Uh, a very much rotated team. So people like uh, Guigon, Vicario, Zahovic started, Rallis... Simeonovic started on the wing. Uh, Veselinovic, Kufre, Saul played his first game or second game, I think, for the club and did okay. Stoinic came in at right back. So a bit of a mix of the team there. Loughlin getting a start as well. And then we played two. We've just beaten Lokomotiva 2-0 um, at a pretty much sold-out Kranjevica. Uh, they got a man sent off on the 68th minute. We scored one goal after that, but it was all very, very comfortable. The stats in this game were ridiculously favourable to us. We absolutely battered them. Um, and we're going against Real Madrid. Now, these two games here, you'll see it says we've played um, we played against the 4-2-2-2-2 and the 4-2-3-1 wide. Uh, if I just add in um, formation, is that my formation? Formation, yeah, opposition. Let's, can I now auto-size, oh, no, on auto-size all columns so we can get them all on there. Okay, so it's getting a little bit busy this now, but it's not... Ah, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, can I do Control z to change that? No, I can't. Let's go date. Okay, let's go date again, because it's putting the wrong way around. There we go. So if we just move this over here, we don't need to see what the full name of the competition game is. Uh, opposition formation, our formation, and the attendance, I guess, a little bit better. So... These last two games, we've come up with a 4-1-4-1 DM wide formation. Now, it has sort of evolved, this formation, from the counter-attacking formation that we were using in the Champions League against the bigger clubs, which hasn't really got the results we wanted. I mean, we put up some good performances in there. Now, you could argue, Dave, why change from a 4-2-3-1 wide when it was being so successful for you in the league? Well, th to be honest, the reason is, is because I want to play to a sort of philosophy now and I've put out a few tweets saying about this and it's all about building tactics that we can bring the youth players through so we can start the youth players training to give them more of a chance to get into the first team I do want to start bringing through more youth players that we have um, and things like that and the 4141 allows us to build around uh, where is he Henry Valencia now we have a wonder kid in our team, or a wonder child, as I like to call them. So I have actually gone and signed a wonder child. There you go, Ian. You're asking me. Um, I have signed a wonder kid. Uh, he came on a free transfer, and he's played a, a handful of games this season. But I thought, you know, we've got this this player here. We really should be building the squad around him. If he's labelled as a wonder kid, um, as long as we can keep him, we should really build the squad around him because he's going to be something superb. So that form this formation allows us to do that. Now. Drastic changes that this formation then allows us to do is I just these should be fullbacks on support. I've been tinkering around with it quite a lot and going through 
um, what's happening. So this is the general formation we will play. When we're up against weaker teams, we overlap on both sides. Uh, we can work the ball into the box a little bit more. Uh, and we can play on attacking. That's generally what happened. This won't really ever change. Regroup and counter. We want to force people out and then hit them on the quick counter attack. We're still going to try and distribute it to the full backs and the centre backs. We're going to try and build up from the back as well. We're against weaker teams. We play a higher tempo, but we're about to play in Real Madrid, so a lower tempo. Um, we play the offside trap, which again could be a nightmare against Madrid. You just don't know. Uh, we have a standard line of engagements against really weaker teams. We'll go all the way up, but generally we want to try and I'm tempted to even go lower so that we really restrict the space in the middle. Um, we don't press, but the three th front three people do press in the game. Now, we play narrow, and we have much shorter passing we play out of defence. I want us to go into games and absolutely dominate possession. If we've got the ball, it's a lot harder for the opposition to do anything. And we're actually quite good with the ball. So, for our level in Croatia, we're very good with the ball. We should be dominating teams. I want to take this sort of ethics of football into Europe and just get us playing. Even if we get battered, I want us to have a pretty consistent way of playing that we tweak as the games go uh, and do it that way. So, into the formation then. We have a sweeper keeper like normal. Flat back four. We're training all of our centre backs now to be ball playing defenders. So, when sub and moving forward in the transfer window, we're going to try and, or future transfer windows, we're going to try and bring in ball playing defenders when, when we need to. Uh, we've got a deep line playmaker in Valencia. That's who this formation tries to get the best out of um, of him. So far, it's been pretty good, and he's been playing quite well. Uh, Stoyak and Vicario, the midfielders can change. We've got loads of central midfielders. The important thing is that one's supporting, so he's up and down. Tempted to go box to box, but we don't really have anyone with the right fitness to do that at the moment, and I'm not sure how well it'll work with a Mazella. And then we have the Mazella on attack, who's forced to... He sort of gets into these areas here and out here when the inside forward cuts in. Two inside forwards allows us to get people into the box. And Zahovic is starting today as a deep line forward. The deep line forward is something we need to utilise more because he holds up the ball. When we were playing this one striker formation with an advanced forward, and I was looking back through the highlights, you can see because he sits on the shoulder of the last man, it forces us to play long balls up to him and, and just skip the midfield, which is what we don't want to do. What we want to do is build up the play through here Basically, through these five people is who we want to build it through. Either these five or these five. These three and then the fullbacks out here. That's what we want to do. And then we can allow the inside forwards to get into position up here. Zahovic drops the... The Mazala breaks through at the last minute. And we get people into the box. Which is why, in today's game, we're going to hit early crosses. So what that should do is basically the inside forwards, we don't want them getting the ball on the wing at all. So they should run in field, and then the fullback should get to about halfway, just above halfway, and whip in across. Well, hopefully, we'll have two inside forwards, a deep line forward, and a Mazala causing havoc in the box for them. That's the plan. So we're going to get into the game. Um, we're going to just take off Napoli and bring in two and Zabi at the back. Uh, I think that's the only change we're going to go for. Maybe Stoyak as well um probably will bring in Mikel Arejo just because he's better than Stoyak I've got a few people moaning about game time and stuff they're all starting to have a little moan in my ear Peritin's come a few times to have a moan but I've managed to you know calm him down uh Vicario has as well but that's just because I really should be playing him more he's very very good for a 21 year old um, so let's get into the game we've got Real Madrid coming to Croatia which is absolutely brilliant Two inside forwards, a deep line forward. I'm expecting us to get battered, but I want us to hold on to possession. We're going to be watching it in 2D again. Sorry about that, everybody that hates 2D, but it does make it easier for me to see what's sort of happening. And even in this, it will allow us to... Um, for me to talk through what I want the formation to do, and I might, you know, I might pause it here and there, and we can have a look at what's going on. And... You know, I think that's quite fun to do. If you guys hate it, let me know down in the comments and I won't do videos like this again. But I think it's about time we got chatting about tactics and what we're trying to do here as a club. We've we've got to the point now where we're pretty much going to be dominating Croatia. That's that's a given. We've got one of the strongest teams. We've probably got the most money. I think we're now we are officially the highest reputation club in Croatia, um, which is what we want to do. So, straight away... Our fullbacks aren't pushing up too high. Yes, they, they used to be like up here somewhere. But this shape is sort of what we want. So Valencia drops in and gives an option. However, look, Vicario is totally free. 
the whole point of the Mazala is that he stays as free as he can, and as we move forward, hopefully, with the ball, and we get up a bit on the, on the screen, the Mazala will come through here, find these channels in between the centre-back and the full-back, as this right-back will hopefully track Guigon, who should move out here and then come... If the ball goes over here, from, let's say Tuanzebi passes it over to Vasilovic, Guigon will come wide and then come forward, and that should leave a big gap for the Mazala to run through. So we'll just see how this plays out, and uh, we'll go there. So Tuanzebi brings the ball out of defence into Stoinic. Stoinic holds on to up the line to Arejo. Arejo just turns. Can he do something? Into Zahovic. It's a poor pass, and... That's gonna. That's what's gonna let us down. Um, we're going for shorter passing. We're gonna try and dictate the tempo in games we play. Obviously, this is a bad example to show you because it's Real Madrid, and they're probably gonna dictate the tempo better than us. We have the inside forwards on attack, which means they won't track their fullbacks much. So expect overloads on this side, similar to that sort of situation there. But we just need to. I just want to play it in this game to see how it does against the big club. I am. It's, it's Madrid. It's one of the biggest clubs in the world. So Arreo comes forward. He actually gets round his man. I just want to pause this when we get a situation. So, now, Vicario, as a Mazala, he's not a natural Mazala, but as a Mazala, he should drive in here and then either shoot or lay it off to, to Guigon, who's going to pull off away from his man. Now, he's up against two good defenders, but what this has done is you can see the options he's got all around him, which is what we want to do. So let's forward this. So Vicario just... Okay, he didn't take it forward. He just shot. Courtois made the save. Um, so it was a good, it was a decent effort. So Guigon with a corner and it goes towards the back post. Valencia gets beaten in there. The other reason I want to build a formation about Valencia and get him playing is he's six foot four. So he's amazing from set pieces. Vicario, Guigon, is that foul? No, it was a good tackle from Luis. But again, one shot, one on target. We forced Courtois into a save. So it's a decent uh, enough start. Let's just encourage them. Vera with a throw into Valencia. He's just robbed. Fernando, ball back post. Chiesa's there. Yeah, okay, that's a counter-attack. I haven't changed my throw-in formations for this formation yet. Uh, throw-in tactics for this formation. So, you know, that's always going to happen. We don't need to see that again. I mean, Vera, Valencia, it was just good pressure from Fernando. Good ball passed. And it's a wonderful finish. You just don't get that sort of football in the Croatian league. So, that's just from Madrid being Madrid and being very good. But again, we're looking to build it out from the back. Two and Xavi. Comes forward. So Tuanzebi has the trait, bring the ball out of the fence. So it is quite useful in this situation. Bicardio finds a bit of space again into Guigon. Guigon is round his man very well. Now back to Arejo. Arejo shoots. Oh, Courtois tips it. Oh, it looked like it was going past the post, but he does make a save. Now we could tell our fullbacks to push on because we're already losing and we know Madrid are going to beat us. And it will show you what, what I want from the formation in its entirety. So... I think rather than saying we'll go for the overlap, let's put them to... Do I want to go to a fullback attack? or do I think I'll just leave them as they are, but we'll just say let's get further forward. Um, just so you can see what I mean about options. If that doesn't show what I want it to do, then we'll put the overlap back on and just deal with the fact that we're probably going to lose. Vicario's picked up a knock. He's down to 60%. He's recovering quite quickly, though, so we'll just leave that as it is. Mina... Out to Veselinovic. Again, building up from the back. Now, Veselinovic, you'll see, doesn't have bring the ball out from the back. So, he's not storming off on a run like Tu and Zabi did. But, this is what I want us to do. I want us to build it up. Build the play up relatively slowly. Obviously, it's quicker when we play league games. There's the runners in the middle. Arejo's there. It's a good save from Courtois. Now, that was a perfect example of a Mazala causing havoc and someone else getting onto the ball. Um, so, again, it, it's, it's creating formations. We go long with the throw. Guigan's never going to win that. Uh, Vera picks it up. He's got... Stoinic out here, so he is pushing further forward now. Two and Zabi. Don't lose it there. Oh, into Arejo. Valencia. Valencia Vicario. Zahovic. Zahovic around the corner. Grigon. Grigon's in. Save from Courtois again, and we're creating chances. Even against Madrid, we are creating the chances. We could up the tempo a little bit as well. Not, I'm not going to do that just yet. We're only half an hour in, and it is still Real Madrid that we're playing against. So, yeah, we just need to... I'm just going to encourage them again. No need to start the run. Steinich has now picked up a knock as well. A bruised, a bruised ankle. And you want to come off? Bloody, wear shin pads, you fanny. The bruised ankle. I mean, you could argue we're dominating the game. Six shots, five on target, 55% possession. Um, it's going all right. Courtois goes short to Angel Luis. Now, we should put pressure on from the front three, and that's it. Luis gets it into Carlos. Uh, to Courtois. Now, we've got someone here. Arejo, that's probably a bit too high for my liking from Arejo. Maybe should be dropping back. Lourdiel into Angel Luis. 
The actual key one we need to see is Valencia. Now, he shouldn't really get pulled too far out of position. If he does, we need to change into a defensive uh, stuff. So, Jota's here. Now, he has an overlap, but he's gone down the middle to Arp. Again, it's just a wonderful pass. Great save from Mina, though. And, um, yeah, let me know what you think about these tactic videos because I quite enjoy doing them. This is how I think about the game when I'm doing it away from the camera. It's not all just rush, 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 through, through, through. I am trying to think about things we can do. Um, I've just noticed how tight our group is, other than us. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, we're doing well. Keep going, keep going. I need, I need to keep an eye on these injuries. So let's bring on... Um, do we bring Stoyak in for a 6.5, 6.5? Okay, Stoyak can come off. I mean, he's going to have to be replaced by Napoli, and we're going to have to put two and Zabi out there, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I do really want to save our players for the league. We'll bring on Stoyak as the Mazala. And then, then the next one to look out for is Arejo. Obviously, Arejo, he wants to be an in... We'll swap those two over. Let's give them a go that way round for a, for a chance in the second half. And we'll see how it goes. Now, do we... Let's... Do we up the tempo for the second half? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We're still going to try and hit those early crosses in so that our fullbacks don't push up too high and leave us completely. And Stoyak's first involvement in the game is to get tackled, so that's impressive. Ball over the top, looking for Chiesa, who just out muscles his way into behind the fullback and Veselinovic with a good header. Luis picks it up, and Martinez is forced a little bit wide, and that's a good blocking of the cross there. But yeah, I think we're doing well. We've we we kept Courtois busy, which is look at this. Yeah, 12, 10, 10. Absolutely ridiculous. Real Madrid are not going through in the Champions League as it stands, even though they're winning, which is quite funny when you think about it, really. But um yeah, we're doing we're doing alright. We're doing okay. We need we need our wingers to come into the game, the inside forwards, but I guess it's so congested against Madrid, and they'll be good at marking as Fernando gets a shot off, good save from Mina again. Yeah, we're doing we're doing all right. We've only got one sub left, so we're gonna have to be sensible with it. And we're going all right. I think let's go let's go positive rather than attacking. We'll go positive, and we're gonna take off hitting hit the early crosses. Let's see if that makes a difference. Uh, you know, can you argue we're holding our own against Madrid? I think we can argue that. I think we can. Let's even shout at them. Let's demand a little bit more. Let's try and get these players. Playing a little bit better. Jota, free kick, in it goes. Free at the back post, Luis, but Mina makes a good save. He's got some clubs interested in Mina, and I don't know if we're going to be able to keep hold of him. He's got a minimum free release clause that I'm going to desperately try and get people to to pay. We're going to bring Simeonovic on into the inside forward on the right-hand side. He can play out there ever so slightly, so hopefully it'll be all right. I mean, the thing with this formation is that... I, it actually brings Zahovic back into the first team, which is something I didn't think we'd be doing. We're trying to get Simonovic to do it. They've got runners coming. Mina makes a save. It's actually changed since we've gone positive. Um, I think it's allowed Madrid to have a bit more of a impact in the game. Now, I need to set up this corner routine. I don't. I used to like this sort of setup, but I don't like it anymore. It's a bit too near post loaded, um, and that's not what we're about anymore. We'll just demand a bit more from them again. Ten minutes to go, and it looks like the whole episode is going to be me chatting through a com extended highlights package and uh, talking tactically. But generally, I think we've done okay. Jota into Liola. Liola gets in. Balls to the back post. Chiesa's there. Controls it. Good block on it. Luis picks it up. Zahovic is trying to put him under pressure. Chiesa on the far side is offside. Um, they're going to bring on Kovacic, who's still there, for Anglo Martinez. So they bring in the central central midfielder for a centre back and then play him at left back interesting interesting decision from Real Madrid but 1-0 uh, it looks like it's going to it's gonna finish and I'm not too bad unless we get an equaliser here that'd be wonderful no it's cleared at the back post two minutes of injury time we may well get a hit on the counter attack here as well Fernando jumps past one's tackle lays it off to Chiesa looking for his second goal of the game squares it back to Arp and Mina makes the save Generally, headers are really hard to score in Football Manager this year from those sorts of crosses. So if you convince the teams to put a cross like that, like looping cross in, and they have to header it, it has to be a very good header to get past the goalkeeper. So that's not a problem. I mean, oh, Vera. Vera, you're causing me problems, man. The two left-backs I brought in. I think, again, in the next window, or the next window is January, maybe the summer, next summer window, uh, I think we're going to just try and get two new fullbacks, to be honest. Again, right back and left back. But I think we've done well. 
Let me know in the comments below what do you think about knowing more about the tactics. Are you happy for me to do the occasional episode like this where we pause it, have a look at what's going on and things like that? Not that we did it too much in this. But um, despite the result, I'm pleased with the performance. 1-0. Are you happy that we only lost 1-0 to Madrid? I am, which is weird. And Real Madrid didn't qualify from that group. That is ridiculous. Okay, we picked up a few injuries in that game, didn't we? Bloody hell. One to two days, he's out. That's okay. Stoyanic, one to three days. He said he got a bruised, a bruised ankle after sprinting. What? Explain to me how that is even possible. Um... So post-match care from yeah, go on, Marco. Uh, and we've made a bid for Hammerwood, Ben Amor, and Ian Allen's taking charge of the five percent yearly. Hey, why do you keep giving people yearly way rides, Ian? Bloody hell! Basically, he was very highly rated by our scouts. We we're paying five hundred k for him. He's a natural Mazala. He's got good tackling, good work rate, good vision, decent long shots potentially. There's a lot we don't know about him, so we're going to keep scouting him. But yeah, we'll see what happens there. That's it. Now it's the. I think it's the winter. I think it's the winter window. If if I'm not mistaken, I think we're into the winter break. Uh, next game, 12th of January. On a friendly next league game. Yeah, 29th of January. So into the winter break we go. Which means we can leave the episode here. Let me know what you think about the squad, the tactics, the new way we're playing. I'm gonna put so many friendlies in here that the players aren't going to know what's hit them. We need to get used to this new tactic and control in the ball. So that's what we're going to do. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you're enjoying the series. I really hope you're loving this series. I am. I love it. It's really... I think it is going to be probably my favourite ever series. Sorry, Maribor fans. But I think it will be my favourite ever series because we've taken them from so far down. And we're... I'm going into it in a lot more depth than I've ever really done before, and I'm really enjoying that. So I hope you, I hope that comes across in the videos, and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Um, if you want to get in touch with me on Twitter or on the Discord channel, all the link is in the description below. Discord's free, so please sign up, come and get involved in all the chat that's going on. And uh, if you want to be a patron, the link is in the description below, as is the Teespring store where you can buy t-shirts, mugs, and phone cases with the Cultured Left Foot logo on. But for now, I'm out. Cheers.